Hey, Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah. How's it going? No, not too bad. How about yourself today? Uh, my tray is here too. Awesome. <clears throat> hey, my tray, can you hear me? Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo, my tray. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Look like hats. <laughs> we. Uh, how cold is it up there in Wisconsin, in Washington? Uh, right now it's in the 40s. Yeah, it's the same here. We That's get getting cold all over every now and then. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, today's been good. Um, you always get snow there, right? Every winter. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, <clears throat> it is uh, Pennsylvania, but I used to live in Wisconsin, so I was used to it, you know. Yeah. Wisconsin, my, my father, uh, my brother wrecked a car, and my father said he refused to take a car. He was like one of these guys that didn't like cars or malls. And so he used to he used to take his bike in one foot of snow. Oh my god! And like put a like a basket on the back of it and, and go for groceries. <laughs> oh my he god! He's a man cars. after my own heart. <laughs> in Wisconsin, no less. Jeez. <clears throat> but um, let's see if I can pull up the screen here. That was a nice session we had with uh, Dave Ananda. He he helped me fix my retaining wall, which fell down and. He's he's like a and I tried to give him some money, but you know I paid him for the original job, but he refused the money. Wow. Anyway, devotees are very selfless. Does he live near you? Uh, no, he lives in New Vrindavan. Oh. But he he comes to Pittsburgh every once in a while to do gigs, you know. Okay. Share a screen. <clears throat> Hold on a second. He's recently in touch with uh, Sankirtan Prabhu. He's, I think he still lives in Evernaden, right? Sankirtan? Yeah. You mean the, the theatrical Sankirtan? Yes. Andy Frankel. Andy Frankel. <clears throat> he goes by the name Andy Frankel if you want to contact him on uh, Facebook. No, we're already in touch. I don't need to do that. Yeah, he's, he's actually a, a published author now. He wrote the Mahab or Mahabharat, and uh, he's had a wonderful storytelling capability. Of course, he's yeah, done I that. Saw him on, uh, I saw him on a podcast recently. Yeah, he's also been on podcasts with various uh, groups and organizations. You know, he's a good preacher. Um, <laughs> a very young devotee that has a podcast. His name is Namras. And he's, he's, so, he's so young and sort of naive that the podcast <laughs> comes across very fresh and uh, apolitical. So he's had a lot of, a lot of really interesting people on his podcast. He says, uh, ironically, he said it's the number one podcast in the world. And he says, I don't even know if that's true. And I think that's not the best way to start off a Brahminical podcast if you don't even know what you're saying is true. But <laughs> yeah, a Brahmin is supposed to be truthful, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, fake it till you make it, I guess. Everybody's doing podcasts now. I can't figure out how to um, share my screen now. Um, I, what I know about Zoom is is very... Not very much. When you move it around at the bottom, you should have a, a menu bar. It would list like participants, chat, share screen should be right in the middle. Yeah, share screen. But uh, I'm looking at chapter two. I just sometimes when I toggle around, it allow me to, oh, I'll see it. It says basic whiteboard and phone pad on the top and it just has screen. Press Alt and Tab at the same time a couple of times and see what see what you find. That shows you other processes that are running on your machine, and sometimes it will reveal something that you is hidden otherwise. Yeah, that's what I've tried before, but it oh. it doesn't seem to work. Um, well, I have a I can open Bhagavad. Do you have a Bhagavad Gita with you? Yeah, I mean, I just open a, another screen and I use the database usually. 
I usually find something I want to share and that makes it easy. Okay, let's just do it that way. We'll do it manually and we'll keep the screen going here, but uh, I can't get it to, to share the screen. So I guess everybody that's, that's, uh, is going to see our beautiful shining faces, your beautiful shining face. You did. <laughs> what, uh, what verse of the uh, last text. time? What, what did we leave off on? Which verse? Uh, 20. 20. Oh, great. This is one of the verses that um, I appreciate the philosophical uh, correctness of the current translation, but I really miss the lyricism of the old translation. I know. Yeah, it, it bothers me too sometimes. I think they're trying to be too, a little bit too exact in the grammatical uh, Sanskrit department, you know. That's one and, of the problems. The other they, one, yeah. You know, I was talking to David Andapanit about that yesterday, and he just says, says I hope that it stops, you know? Yeah, uh, that's got to stop because I mean, the, the, the reason for doing it was ostensibly to make it more acceptable for scholars. But according to um, Garuda and some other scholars that are actually in academia, he, he's teaching at Harvard and other Ivy League schools. Uh, he says the scholars are now rejecting it because it wasn't done in the right way. If you make posthumous edits, you have to, it's, you have to come out with a new edition and it has to say right on the cover the first author's name, and then the fact that it's an edited version. Well, actually, that, that is the case in the, in the new editions of the Gita. I was talking to Adi Prusha from Ukraine about that, and he was saying that the, the, the Bhagavad Gita that he has, has says that it's a revised edition. But, doesn't but have to, it's more than just revised. There's, there's a number of steps you have to take because the scholars appreciated Prabhupada. Not, not the, not, and that's why they were so fans of the Gita, that it was, it was, his, it was Bhaktivedanta Swami's translation. So yeah. the disciples are doing something too, that's fine, but it's a different book. And they're not, right. they're not nearly as interested in that as they were in his divine grace. And so when you start changing his words, but his name is still on the front, that just burnt, they really, I mean, the, the amount they don't like it can't be understated. They yeah, just that's that's actually, uh, uh, if you s print his name on the book and then say that it's uh, from him, then that's kind of like uh, yeah. dishonest. I asked Jadwe to Swami why, after I saw a couple of edits that I didn't like, and I asked him, and he says, well, Prabhupada told me to edit, and he never told me to stop. And I said, what about Arsha Prayog, the whole principle that Prabhupada said not even a comma could be changed, and he just shrugged his shoulders. And Dravid is not much better in that regard. So I mean, Who not that I don't appreciate that they have a service attitude, but that doesn't mean that they're not asked backwards in the way they're doing it. Who are you talking to that said that? Jai Dwaita Swami and Dravid. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of like, I always get stuck on that one verse that, uh, you know, I really like the verse that from five, uh, 434 which is just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, inquire from him submissively and render service to him. Self-realized soul can impart knowledge into you because he's seen the truth. And right. then what's the next verse? The next verse in the original version is when you have lost learned the truth, you'll know that all living beings are a part of me, they're in me and they're mine. But they've changed it to take the truth out. They took the truth out of it. And that was the point, even though it might not be in the original Sanskrit, it might, it, 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 it's the point that, that uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada was emphasizing because it is the truth. When you've, you know, he's talking about the truth in the previous verse, it carries over to the next verse. When you've thus learned the truth, then you'll know this. Yeah. His purpose. And they don't, they don't the include that verses. in this version. Yeah. So that's kind of upsetting too. Is that, I also just, noticed in one verse where it said old in the, in the, in the previous one, it, the, the uh, truth, there was some word that was capitalized that made the self. That's right. It was this, the word self was capitalized, which made it obvious that it's referring to the Supreme self in the trans in the new translation. It was with a small S. And when mm -hmm. I challenged I Dwayne on that, he said, well, there's no rule that, you know, small S or big S. And I thought, what the hell? Of course there is. Everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so, like the, the truth with a capital T. There's all different kinds transcendence of transcendence with a capital T refers to the absolute truth with a capital T. It means, you know, transcendence with a capital T means Krishna. Yeah. And if it's with a small T, it just means the word transcendence. I mean, this is common sense, really. But you know, don't get me started on this because, you know, I, I started out reading from uh, from uh, the Krishna books, Inc., the KrishnaPath.org. I was uploading to the Mayapur site with yeah, all the original pre-1978 editions. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't really care that much about it. I just like to read, you know? But then some things just kind of get my goat. Like there's this one verse from the Bhagavatam that is in 
is in Vaisheshika's Mangala Charna prayers that he says, it's from the second chapter. And it goes like, when you thus, uh, what, when it goes, um, by regular hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and, uh, you know, the, you know, loving service to the glorious Lord will be, you know, but it's, but now the, the current version says, by regularly attending classes. And that just gives me flashbacks what? from, that gives me flashbacks from high school because I hated attending no. classes. No, it's Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavata, the word is right in there. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, yeah, but they 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 changed it to the attending classes because I guess you know, I got to hear from authority. You know? <laughs> That's kind of distasteful to me, but you know, you know and mean, as, as much as these changes irk, I don't. There, there are some people that have gone too far and says that they've been completely changed. And I, I think if people read all, of, I mean, we wrote so many books, so if you read them all, you're you're going to get it. You know, a few changes like that may irk old timers, but I don't. Oh, think no, it's I mean, you know, it wasn't. I don't think uh, that Jadoid's intention to change the meaning of Prabhupada's books. You know, it was actually, and my mentor Adi Purusha from Ukraine. He's my mentor. He loves audiobooks and he's actually plugged my books when he was giving class in Nibrandavan and uh, he actually made a little tiny URL you know Prabhupada Sil Prabhupada 108 or something like that and so he he's been trying to help me with and he he's kind of like my Vart he's like kind of like my instructing spiritual master as far as audiobooks go but uh, he is said he that they didn't Gopal really Krishna Goswami? what's that is he a disciple of Gopal Krishna Goswami no he's from the Ukraine I'm not sure what, who's his spiritual master is. Okay, I'm just looking him up online while we're talking. I'm trying to find it. So here yeah, is but I he's a, I he's a nice. very good preacher. He preaches Institute, mostly, yeah. I think he's in Vrindavan now, but he he travels all over the world and and he's uh, mentioned on the Adi Prush, on the Mayapur Institute website. He's from the Ukraine. Yep, here he is. I found him. Okay, from yeah, LVI. He, he helped in Bak Ukraine. Bak uh, to translate Prabhupada's books into the Ukrainian language. Ukrainian BBT. He was working with yeah. the BBT and everything. Yeah. But he says, okay. you know, a lot of this stuff that, that, that people are so upset about, a lot of people just have to have a, a cause that they can back behind. And, it, and really, it's not worth all the fuss. You know, I just get an anxiety when I get into any of these arguments. You know, I don't talk about book changes. I don't talk about Ritvik. I don't talk about, I don't even talk about gluten. I don't talk about vaccines. I don't talk about, uh, you know, any yeah. kind of health, you know, uh, things like that. And I don't even, I really try to stay away from all kinds of controversy. Thank you very much. There are some very exalted mm -hmm. Vaishnavas who have now talked more about the fact, the pandemic and vaccines than they do about Krishna. And that's a great loss. And <laughs> right. Sad. Well, yeah, I mean, when, when you, when you can, when you, uh, it's a deviation because you think, okay, now we're picking sides and this is my side and that's the other side. Right. And I used to be a political activist in the early 2000s. I was actually the move on director for for um the city of pittsburgh hmm. and you know i was one of these libtards you know <laughs> as they call them but uh i i was constantly on anxiety because it's always like against us and them and Prahlad right. maraj didn't like that he couldn't relate to that yeah. you know he's trying to you know say this is your enemy and this is your right. friend I just finished reading the pastime where the, the universe is getting dark in the third canto and the demigods approach lord brahma and ask him what's going on and he's not in anxiety about it at all. And so he tells the whole backstory about the Kumara's visit to Vaikuntha and how that sort of went south for the for giant Vijay seemingly. But in the end, he tells the demigods, so don't even, don't talk about it. Don't think about this too much. Just go back and do your service. And, you know, the point being the, the goal of life is to become Krishna conscious. Iranya Kasyapu and Hiranyaksha are going to do a lot of strange things. Just, you know, don't, don't work yourself up about it. Right. So, yeah. It's just all temporary. Exactly. It was actually Krishna's pastime because he wanted to fight. Exactly. But the thing is, you know, um, and we also have that tendency, but, um, you know, we have to be careful when <laughs> Boy, we don't. We? <laughs> well, we have to be careful when we're utilizing it. it you yeah. know, we're not really, you know, I've been known to run from a fight later. You know, I used to have, I have a, like a megaphone in my basement. I used to use for, for, for rallies and stuff. It's collecting dust and cobwebs now. <laughs> but, All right. uh, but uh, the thing is, you know, um, I, I used to read Emerson when I was in high school. And he said something really cool. He said uh, that, um, you know, the ancient honorable of the world, you know, like one war or a personality or a big uh, uh, um, 
a change in the in the business or whatever uh, uh, these conflicts that go on in the material world you know one side of the world cries it up and the other side of cries it down as if it all depended on this particular up and down. But don't let it never be lost on the scholar. He's this, the name of the essay was the American scholar that a, a pop gun is a pop gun, even though the ancient and honorable of the world declare it to be the crack of doom. Hmm. And, and it's just, you know, it's just wow. much to do about nothing, just like yeah. Shakespeare said, you know, uh -huh. but we don't have to get involved in these things. And uh, basically, if you think that your agenda or your political, um, you know, whatever it is that you're thinking about right now is more important than Krishna's mission, then you're pretty puffed up, you know, Krishna's mission is the most important thing. We always have to focus on Krishna's, what is Krishna's agenda? And, you know, when I was an activist, Nityogdita told me, he said, you only have a certain amount of time and energy in this life. So what are you going to do? you know, with it, you know. Jesus. By the way, I just treated his sister to Prashadam dinner the other night. She lives in my town, Mount Vernon, Washington. Who, whose sister? Nita? Nita Dita, yeah. And I was, I was talking about devotees. She said, well, you know, my brother's a devotee. And I said, oh, and you know, a lot of people, and I said, what's his name? She said, Nitya. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Nitya Dita's uh, sister lives in Washington. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to mention that then. He gave class this morning. On the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Wow. I actually posted on my page if you want to listen to it. It's pretty good class. Okay. I like but those. um <clears throat> anyway, I, I'm gonna switch this conversation. I'm gonna let Mike talk now because Mike is just sitting there listening to us babble on. So text 20, Mike, read um start reading the Sanskrit, and you can also read uh you know, like the first paragraph of the purport as well, because it's it's kind of a long purport. Sure. Jayate Mriyate Va Karachin Layam Bhutva Bhutvika Vana Buya Ajo Nicha Shashvato Yam Parano Nahanyate Hanyamane Sarire Na never Jayate takes birth Mriyate dies va either Karachit at any time past present or future. Na, never, I am this. Utva, having come into being. Babita, will come to be. Va, or, na, na, buya, or is again coming to be. Aja, unborn. Nicha, eternal. Shashvata, permanent. Ayam this. Purana, the oldest. Na, never, hanyate, is killed. Hanyamane, being killed. Sarire, the body. For the soul, there is neither birth nor death at any time. He has not come into being, does not come into being, and will not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Purport. Qualitatively, the small atomic fragmental part of the Supreme Spirit is one with the Supreme. He undergoes no changes like the body. Sometimes the soul is called the steady or kutasta. The body is subject to six kinds of transformations. It takes its birth from the womb of the mother's body, remains for some time, grows, produces some effects, gradually dwindles, and at last vanishes into oblivion. The soul, however, does not go through such changes. The soul is not born, but because he takes on a material body, the body takes its birth. The soul does not take birth there, and the soul does not die. Anything which has birth also has death. And because the soul has no birth, he therefore has no past, present, or future. He is eternal, ever existing, and primeval. That is, there is no trace in history of his coming into being. Under the impression of the body, we seek the history of birth, etc., of the soul. The soul does not at any time become old as the body does. The so-called old man, therefore, feels himself to be in the same spirit as in his childhood or youth. The changes of the body do not affect the soul. The soul does not deteriorate like a tree nor anything material. The soul has no byproduct either. The byproducts of the body, namely children, are also different individual souls and owing to the body, they appear as children of a particular man. The body develops because of the soul's presence, but the soul has neither offshoots nor change. Therefore, the soul is free from the six changes of the body. Yeah, it's just, it reminds me of my father. My father's like 91 years old. He was going out of a building through some glass doors and some 
young college students offered to help him and he was looking at his reflection in the mirror. He felt the same. He said, who is that old man there, you know? But he's the same person, you know? Um, I'll just read uh, the next paragraph here. And then uh, Maitreya, you can pick up after that. In the Kata Upanishad 1 to 18, you, we also find a similar passage which reads, Najete Merche Vipaschin, Nayam Kutaschin, Na Babuva Chaschit, Ajonitya Sashratoyam Purno, Nahanite, Hani Meni Sarede. The meaning and purpose of the verse is, is the same as in the Bhagavad Gita, but here in this verse, there is one special word, Vipaschit, which means learned or with knowledge. So I guess the first one, Karachit, at any time. Which one is that replacing? Instead of Kadachit, it's Vipaschin, the one who is learned, right, instead of at any time. <clears throat> you can read the rest of the um, purport, Maitreya. The soul is full of knowledge, or full always with consciousness. Therefore, consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Even if one does not find the soul within the heart where he is situated, one can still understand the presence of the soul simply by the presence of consciousness. Sometimes we do not find the sun in the sky owing to clouds or for some other reason, but the light of the sun is always there and we are convinced that it is therefore daytime. As soon as there is a little light in the sky in early, mor in the early, early in the morning, we understand that the sun is in the sky. Similarly, since there is some consciousness in all bodies, whether man or animal, we can understand the presence of the soul. This consciousness of the soul is, however, different from the consciousness of the supreme, because the supreme consciousness is all knowledge, past, present, and future. The consciousness of the individual soul is prone to be forgetful. When he is forgetful of his real nature, he obtains education and enlightenment from the superior lessons of Krishna. But Krishna is not like the forgetful soul. If so, Krishna's teachings of Bhagavad Gita would be useless. There are two kinds of souls, namely the minute particle soul, Anu Atma, and the super soul, Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in the Kata Upanishad 1 to 20 in this way Anor Aniyam Mahato Mahiyam Atmasya Jantor Nihito Guhayam Tamakrita Pasyati Vita Shoko Datum Prasadam Mahimanam Atmana. Both the super soul, Paramatma, and the atomic soul, Jivatma, are situated on the same tree of body within the same heart of the living being. And only one who has become free from all material desires as, as well as lamentations can, by the grace of the Supreme, understand the glories of the soul." End quote. Krishna is the fountainhead of the super soul also, as it will be disclosed in the following chapters. And Arjuna is the atomic soul, forgetful of his real nature. Therefore, he requires to be enlightened by Krishna or by his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. Go ahead, Mike. <clears throat> Text 21. Iravina Shinam Nityam Yaina Majam Avyayam Katam Sapurusha Partha Ram Gapyati Hantikam The Veda knows. Avina Shinam, indestructible, Nicham, always existing. Ya, one who. Anam, this soul, Ajam, unborn, Avyayam, immutable, Katham, how, Sa, that, Rusha, person, Partha, O Paratha, Arjuna, Kam, whom, Gatriyati, causes to hurt, Hanti, kills, Kam, whom. O Partha, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn, and immutable, kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? Purport, <clears throat> everything has a proper utility and a man who is situated in complete knowledge knows how and where to apply a thing for its proper utility. Similarly, violence also has its utility and how to apply violence rests with the person in knowledge. Although the justice of the peace awards capital punishment to a person condemned for murder, the justice of the peace cannot be blamed be because he orders violence to another person according to the codes of justice. 
In Manusamita, the law book for mankind, it is supported that a murderer should be condemned to death so that in his next life, he will not have to suffer for the great sin he has committed. Therefore, the king's punishment of hanging a murderer is actually beneficial. Similarly, when Krishna orders fighting, it must be concluded that violence is for supreme justice, and thus Arjuna should follow the instruction, knowing well that such violence committed in the act of fighting for Krishna is not violence at all, because at any rate, the man rather than the soul cannot be killed. So for the administration of justice, so-called violence is permitted. A surgical operation is not meant to kill the patient, but to cure him. Therefore, the fighting to be executed by Arjuna at the instruction of Krishna is with full knowledge, so there's not, no possibility of sinful reaction. Sorry. Mike, why don't, or Maitreya, why don't you read the uh, next verse? Okay, text 22. <clears throat> Achangshi, garments. Jirnani, old and worn out. Jata, just as. Bihaya, giving up. Navani, new garments. Drinati, does accept. Naraha, a man. Aparani, others. Tata, in the same way. Sharirani, bodies. Bihaya, giving up. Jirnani, old and useless. Anyani, different. Sanyati, verily accepts. Navani, new sets. Dehi, the embodied. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. That's a fun verse to read. Because mm -hmm. it's so poetic. Go ahead, Mike, with the purport. I'm just wondering on the um, with the Jirnani, I mean, the, the first time it appears, it's translated as old and worn out. And then the second time it's translated as old and useless. useless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Old and you useless. That the first time the I is long, Jirnani, and the second time is Jirnani. So they're not okay. exactly the same word. Okay. Okay, yeah, oh, I can see it. The, I, the, the, the original I text, got... right, it's the I and the Y. Okay. Huh. I didn't notice that. You got a pretty good eye there, Maitreya. Uh, why don't you read the first two paragraphs? Purport. Okay. Purport. Change of body by the atomic individual soul is an accepted fact. Even the modern scientists who do not believe in the existence of the soul, but at the same time cannot explain the source of energy from the heart, have to accept continuous changes of the body, which appear from childhood to boyhood, and from boyhood to youth, and again from youth to old age. From old age, the change is transferred to another body. This has already been explained in a previous birth, verse 213. Transference of the atomic individual soul to another body is made possible by the grace of the super soul. The super soul fulfills the desires of the atomic soul as one friend fulfills the desires of another. The Vedas like the Mundaka Upanishad as well as the Svetasvarta Upanishad compare the soul and the super soul to two friendly birds sitting on the same tree. One of the birds, the individual atomic soul, is eating the fruit of the tree, and the other bird, Krishna, is simply watching his friend. Of these two birds, although they are the same in quality, one is captivated by the fruits of the material tree, while the other is simply witnessing the activities of his friend. Krishna is witnessing the bird, and Arjuna is the eating bird. Although they are friends, one is still the master and the other is the servant. Forgetfulness of this relationship by the atomic soul is the cause of one's changing his position from one tree to another or from one body to another. The jiva soul is struggling very hard on the tree of the material body, but as soon as he agrees to accept the other bird as the supreme spiritual master, as Arjuna agreed to do by voluntary surrender unto Krishna for instruction, the subordinate bird immediately becomes free from all lamentations. Both the Mandaka Upanishad 312 and the Svetasvarta Upanishad 4 to 7. Confirm this. You want to read uh, the next couple of verses or a couple of paragraphs? Maitreya? Yeah, okay. Samane vriksha purusho nimagno nishaya so chati muha muyamana justam jadi pasyam tyanam yanisham asha mahimanam iti vital shoka. Although the two birds are in the same tree, the eating bird is fully engrossed with anxiety and moroseness as the enjoyer of the fruits of the tree. But if in some way or other, he turns his face to his friend, the Lord, 
and knows his glories, at once the suffering bird becomes free from all anxieties." End quote. Arjuna has now turned his face towards his eternal friend, Krishna, and is understanding the Bhagavad Gita from him. And thus, hearing from Krishna, he can understand the supreme glories of a Lord and be free from lamentation. Arjuna is advised herewith by the Lord not to lament for the bodily change of his old grandfather and his teacher. He should rather be happy to kill their bodies in the righteous fight so that they may be cleansed at once of all reactions from various bodily activities. One who lays down his life on the sacrificial altar or, or in the proper battlefield is at once cleansed of bodily reactions and promoted to a higher status of life. So there was no cause for Arjuna's lamentation. That's kind of weird, you know, laying down your life on the sacrificial altar. I just was thinking you mean like a, it's a Bart Maharaj or somebody? That's not part of our program. <laughs> what he's talking about exactly. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> metaphorical. Of course, you know, there's so many things you can't mention about our, our philosophy, you know, like, okay, yeah, Nasringadev, he's the God who killed par kills parents. <laughs> you can't mention that. Uh, <laughs> text 23. Nainam chindanti sastrani, nainam dadati pavaka, na chainam kle dianti apo, na sochayati mur maruta synonyms na never enam this soul chindanti can cut to pieces shastrani weapons na never enam this soul that hati burns pavaka fire na never cha also enam this soul kladianti moistens apa water na never sociati dries maruta by the wind Translation, the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor moistened by water, nor withered by the wind. You know, and also it seems like, you know, the soul is also part and parcel of Krishna. So all these religious wars that we've seen throughout history in India, you know, like the Muslims attacking the Hindus and the Muslims taking the deities and smashing them up and putting them in their mosques in the steps so that they'd they'd be able to walk on the deities forever, you know, that's kind of silly too, because it's not really, it's not really the deities themselves, you know. Uh, so, you know, even an atomic bomb can't kill a, a, uh, a, the soul. And so what's the worst that anybody could do to you, you know, kill you, right? But that's not even that bad. When you look at it from this point of view, it's, you know, the, the soul will continue on. That's like, remember, I remember back in the 80s. I don't know if you were there. Maitre, you came in the 90s, right? I came in the 80s. I came in the late 80s. Okay. Well, there in the earlier 80s, there was a thing on television called The Day After. It was a kind of like a, a dramatization of a nuclear bomb, a war, you know, mm -hmm. and the... the uh, Kansas City got hit with a nuclear bomb. And there's a, right near there, if you remember Sankraton, there's a, a city called Lawrence, uh, Lawrence I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they were there, but they didn't get directly hit. But, you know, some of the people, the members of that community would, would wander into town and they would see the devastation. And, uh, you know, all the Karmis, you know, they were just like completely miserable because their lives were upended and they couldn't, they couldn't, you know, they were, it was so depressing, you know, a lot of people actually, after they watched that movie, they had to have psychological therapy. They actually mandated that for people that were affected by that um, made for TV movie. But I remember Kirtananda you know, Bhaktipada said, uh, you know, after that movie, the devotees, uh, or the karmis have no hope, but the devotee has no fear. And so this is like, this part of the Bhagavad Gita is like uh, reinforcing that idea that even, you know, you're, you shouldn't be afraid of death. You know, at least, you know, we're all attached to our bodies, but we can at least understand theoretically that we're not these bodies, we're a spirit soul, that we should not be afraid of death because Krishna is there, if we remember him at the time of death, that's the final exam. And then we won't have to take birth again. So anyway, um, go ahead, Mike, with the purport. Sure. Some purport. All kinds of weapons, swords, flame weapons, rain weapons, tornado weapons, etc., are unable to kill the spirit soul. 
It appears that there were many kinds of weapons made of earth, water, air, ether, etc., in addition to the modern weapons of fire. Even the nuclear weapons of the modern age are classified as fire weapons, but formerly there were other weapons made of all different types of material elements. Fire weapons were counteracted by water weapons, which are now unknown to modern science. Nor do modern scientists have knowledge of tornado weapons. Nonetheless, the soul can never be cut into pieces nor annihilated by any number of weapons, regardless of scientific devices. Keep going. Uh, go ahead, keep going. The Mayavadi cannot explain how the individual soul came into existence simply by ignorance and consequently became covered by the illusory energy. Nor was it ever possible to cut the individual souls from the original supreme soul. Rather, the individual souls are eternally separated parts of the supreme soul. Because they are atomic individual souls eternally, sanatana, they are prone to be covered by the illusory energy. And thus they become separated from the association of the supreme lord, just as the sparks of a fire, although one in quality with the fire, are prone to be extinguished when out of the fire. In the Varaha Purana, the living entities are described as separate parts and parcels of the Supreme. They are eternally so, according to the Bhagavad Gita also. So, even after being liberated from illusion, the living entity remains a separate identity, as is evident from the teachings of the Lord to Arjuna. Arjuna became liberated by the knowledge received from Krishna, but he never became one with Krishna. You know, it's interesting about the uh, <clears throat> different kinds of weapons that they're talking about. <clears throat> None of these weapons hardly are known by material scientists. You know, every all these movies that they have about, uh, like we we're just talking about the uh, the nuclear weapon. They had nuclear weapons back in the day, but they were subtle and they were launched by mantra, and you could direct them at any individual that you want to, like like. Uh, King Prichit was saved by Krishna from within the womb from Brahmastra weapon. But uh, I was just wondering, you know, they kind of made a movie out of, uh, George Lucas made a movie out of uh, the Ramayan by hearing the story of the Ramayan, which turned into Star Wars. You know, it's actually based on that because uh, Joseph Campbell spent some time with Lucas. I wonder when they're going to make a movie of these, you know, everybody loves blowing stuff up and everything, but he, he, you should have like the, the, the different weapons to make it exciting, but you should also have the uh, idea that the soul can't be destroyed. You know, if they're going to make a movie with devotees acting also, I think Prabhupada has emphasized that if they ever did make a movie like that uh, or a play, it has to be acted out by devotees. Of modern with modern uh, CGI and and actors, especially devotee actors like Will Smith and there's others that are coming on board because they're preaching. You yeah, can, yeah. Just imagine the story of Druva or some of the Bhagavatam stories, uh, like with these different weapons. It would it'd be absolutely fascinating, even from a you know modern entertainment point of view. And then the the crowd would also be benefited by hearing the Bhagavatam. Yeah, I mean, you know, Will Smith's a good actor. I loved it when he like punched that alien out. You know, <laughs> that one movie, the day after or whatever it was. But he's a but, uh, now, so. Yeah, you might not have seen that, but uh, he he's he's. Uh, I wonder if he's ever gonna like he's hanging out with what is his name Jai Streetsy or something like that, that Radna Swami disciple. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, but these even from a CGI viewpoint, all these battles, like the battle between Shiva and and Vishnu, yeah. and all these huge battles would make make the these modern. Uh, transformers and uh, avengers that make him look like a, a picnic the story is the story is so much it, it's compelling you know that's always the the, the fault on a lot of the, the cgi enhanced modern movies is that it it ends up being a lot of boom 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 and a lot of stuff and the story is just you know it's, it's just not there <laughs> yeah there's no story behind it listen we got to stop i want to thank you both there's one less than one minute remaining here Okay. So thank you very much for, for attending again, and we'll see you guys on Monday, hopefully. Okay. All right, Krishna.